Okay, so uh, last week <laughs> I talked about seven types of individuals found in the world and I know most of you were here and now I hope you know which type of individual you are right now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> those who missed uh, the talk, you can listen to it online <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> uh, and if you ha have not understood the seven types of individuals yet, uh, it's good to listen to that talk again and again, uh, over and over again. Remember the word that I used in Pali, punap punang. <laughs> over and over again uh, for the positive reinforcement. So, based on that, uh, if you know what type, of, what type of individual you are, then next, what you have to do is to go to the higher level. <laughs> Let's say, if you're coming onto the surface and sitting on the water, staying there, the next effort should be what? To open your eyes? Not yet, not swimming yet. No. Op open your eyes and look around. <laughs> right? <laughs> so now, uh, to open your eyes and to look around, and of course that is the, uh, the person, the individual who has become the stream enterer, what we call Sotapanna, who has entered the first stage of enlightenment. Um, even to open eyes and to look around, the conditions have to be right. right? So now, uh, if our, if we are not opening our eyes, and if we are not looking around, there should be something uh, that is hindering opening our eyes and looking around. That is what you have to understand. Now based on this now, let me take you, your, your direction to something different, to make it much easier to, for you to understand. Um, probably you have heard this story. Uh, I have talked about it uh, many times in different places. This is a uh, native Indian story. It's a Cherokee. There's a type of tribe called Cherokee. Cherokee, I don't know. Cherokee? Okay. So this is a conversation between the grandfather and the grandson. And one day the grandfather summoned his uh, grandson and he said, grandfather said, the grandson, there is a battle, there is a war going on between two wolves. <coughs> now the grandson was curious. And when the grandfather said that, and the grandson asked a very important and interesting question. So, Grandpa, who is going to win at the end? <laughs> then Grandfather took a deep breath and gently said to the grandson, the one you are feeding every day. Right? And that wolf is going to win the war. So now, if you make it very common today, in the 21st century, let's say there are two uh, battling groups in a country. Let's say the ruling party or the opposition party or the ruling government and the uh, a, a, a separatist <laughs> movement. Right? So now, Let's say the government is very powerful. But if the neighboring 
countries choose to support and feed the separatist movement, <laughs> at the end, that movement is going to win. Right? It, it's happening in the world even now. But again, we are not going there. <laughs> we are here to learn something very positive. So in our life, if you observe, if you look around, uh, in your own life, this battle is going on every day. We all have two votes <laughs> fighting Right? And when you go to the restaurant, these two wolves are fighting. When you go to the shopping mall, <laughs> these two wolves are fighting. When you go to the movies, these two wolves are fighting. Even at work, <laughs> right? In your office, these two wolves are fighting. Even at home, Although you lie down, although you hit the bed in the night, even when you wake up in the morning, throughout the day, these two wolves are fighting in, in your life. Now, the, the, this fight has been there for many, many, many years. In Buddhist tradition, we would say, this war, this battle, began in the time immemorial, beginningless, like in, in what we call the sangsara, the cycle of life. But we have no memories of such a battle from the past. But if you don't want to go back to your past lives, but at least you could understand this looking into your own life in this lifetime. Let's say we all are at 30s, 40s, 50s, maybe. <laughs> Let's say up to 30 years, up to 40 years, up to 50 years, up to 60 years. <laughs> we know that this war has been going on. So now, who is going to win? Who is going to win this war? The one you are choosing to feed every day. How are you feeding this, let's say the, these two wolves are, can be called like the uh, let's say good wolf and the bad wolf. Good mind and the bad mind. If you choose to feed the bad mind every day, let's say through the eyes, these are the channels, you know, how people smuggle weapons, right? <laughs> through the channels, through the tunnels, right? <laughs> so we also have such tunnels in our life. These are the, what we call eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and the mind. There are six channels. So, throughout our life, through these channels, if we feed the bad mind, and this bad mind is going to win over the good mind. The good mind has no way to win over the bad one. Now this is what Buddha did. He stopped feeding the bad mind. He deliberately chose to feed the good mind sitting under the Bodhi tree, the tree of enlightenment, with a strong determination. Although my body begins to emerge, 
Although I have I become a skeleton, although I feel excruciating pain, until I become enlightened, I'm not going to stand up from this seat. I'm not going to stop feeding the good mind under this Bodhi tree. With that determination, he closed his eyes and began to practice meditation hours and hours, days and days. And not only that, he tried first feeding the bad mind. If you read some of his discourses, he explains his own experience of in this experimentation. Let's, uh, he said in, in one discourse, he, 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 he tells the monks, he said, monks, I de deliberately chose to feed the bad mind and I wanted to see what I feel, what kind of experience, feeling it brings. Then he deliberately focused on the of to feed the bad mind with the bad thoughts, bad thinking. And immediately he felt the power of it. And this bad thinking, negative thinking, you know, just changes the whole system of the body. And you feel it, you know, like, you know, when you choose to focus on something negative, and how the anxiety begins to creep in, that you feel like you feel, you feel so stressful, you become so stressed out, and that anxiety, stress, makes your life miserable, destroys the happiness and joy, the peace of mind. That's what you see. <laughs> right? And it happens when, let's say, Buddha did this experiment, experimentation, long time ago, 2,600 years ago. But even today, if you choose to do the same at workplace, at home, or wherever you're going to, while you're driving, and you feel the impact of that negative thinking right away, and you get angry, and you yell, you even jab somebody, <laughs> you lose control over yourself, and it's happening to everybody every day. And Buddha said, it, it makes you miserable. When you choose to feed the bad mind with more bad thinking, bad thoughts, and it makes your life completely miserable. You're not happy. But then if you want to be happy, then intentionally choose to feed the good mind. Choose the good mind and feed it with the good thoughts, right? Compassionate, loving, kind thoughts, and see. And when you and do that, when you focus on, this is also part of the shifting attention, this is what we are doing. When you choose to feed the good, uh, the good mind with the good thoughts, then physically you feel so relaxed. Mentally, Emotionally, you feel calm and relaxed, happy, happier even. And you could become the happiest. So then, once you choose to do this, then it's going to help you to become a happy or happier or the happiest person in the world. Now the question is, how do you stop feeding the bad mind. This is a question you have to ask. How do I do this? What are the ways? <laughs> now, let me give you a, a little uh, example. This is uh, our own observation, my own observation. Uh, when we moved to this temple, you know, uh, in the outside, uh, you know, there are uh, iron bars, the, 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 what do you call those beams that hold the structure? In the corners, then in the corners, in the four, in all corners, 
Uh, then there were some space, right, in all sides. And then we noticed the, uh, the birds, <laughs> and of course they are also looking for some space. <laughs> and the birds, you know, saw these corners and they started collecting the little branches, leaves, right, and made their own nest, their own house. And after that, and of course we, we monks are very kind and compassionate to <laughs> all beings. We don't want to destroy their little homes, no? And their little mansion, you know, the palace. It's a bad thing to do, by the way, <laughs> if you do that. <laughs> you're, you're destroying the whole life. So we did not want to do that, right? And then as, so two birds, maybe a girlfriend or boyfriend, or husband and wife, or whatever they are, right? So then, you know, their population members began to grow. Then they attracted more birds, right? And then all corners, when you uh, walk around the corridor, you see that, you know, there's a big mess, right? Uh, there's a big mess on the corridor. So now, what can we do? <laughs> we can't destroy their house. <laughs> but again, we chose, okay, let the, they also need a space. You know, maybe they are, this is their space. We invaded their space. So we wanted to share. But then the city people came, the building inspectors. And then they said, look, there are birds, there are nests. This is dangerous to the structure. So you have to... Uh, fill it. You have to close all corners. But then we were waiting, you know. Uh, and then in the summer, I think, in the, as the spring, uh, no, spring not, during the fall time, they, you know, the, the, the little birds are big now, they are gone. <laughs> right? It's spring. It's spring, okay. <laughs> they are gone. <laughs> so then, you know, uh, our devotees, after now, this is the instruction from the city. Unless you uh, close those gaps, we are not going to give you the permit. <laughs> this is one of the conditions. So then, you know, we had to close. And when we closed, what happened to the birds? They stopped coming. Right? They stopped coming. And when they stopped coming, what happened to the corridor? There is no big mess. <laughs> we don't have to clean it. <laughs> right? And so, uh, so this is also something like that. When, you, when there is a space, when you create a space for the bad mind, and the, then it is very easy for the bad mind to create more bad thinking and to fill those gaps, those space. Then what happens? it creates a lot of mess in your life. Right? So, you have to choose to fill the gap, the space, with the good thinking, the positive thinking, the good thoughts. Right? And when you do that, then you're, you're fine, you're secured. And then there's another little observation from, uh, from my own practice in, in our monastery in Sri Lanka. Like, you know how sometimes being uh, even here, forget about the Sri Lankan one, um, at our old temple at, by the Dixie Mall. Uh, and so because we want to share things with others, you know, we feed the birds. We, feed, we put when we throw rice outside, the, the bread, a piece of bread, you know, outside to share with the squirrels and the birds, right? Um, even there's a monk in another temple in, in Toronto, uh, when he goes for a service at a home, he collects all the leftover and takes them to the temple to feed the birds. So here we were feeding the birds, then we threw the, the rice and bread and other things outside, then what happened? There was a problem with the mice. Even 
I remember practicing meditation. During the meditation, <laughs> I can hear the rats, the, the mice can walking around behind me. <laughs> and those who are out there, they are looking at me. And these mice, they were... <laughs> And some people stop coming. <laughs> this is not the right place to come and meditate. <laughs> so anyways, then while we were practicing meditation one day, then one mouse just, you know, he was able to go through the people. And one, one girl saw the mouse and she couldn't stand it. She screamed and she became so restless. And <laughs> so anyways, that's one thing. Then outside, the one day I was looking outside through the window from, this, from my room and then I saw there are kind of squirrels, like, like squirrels, you no, know, a lot of them, many, maybe hundreds. Then I thought, I haven't seen these squirrels before. What happened? Then I paid attention. My goodness, these are not the squirrels, these are mice, big one. Then what happened? Because we had a, a, a refrigerator outside, it's a, the broken one, we would put the garbage there. Underneath that garbage, these, these are the food for the mice. They enjoyed them, enjoyed them. These mice became this big. <laughs> a lot of them. Now so our neighbor, I think, complained to the city, and the city inspectors came, and they, I don't know what they did, you know. <laughs> They are gone. They are gone. And then they, uh, they, they advise us not to throw any food outside. All the squirrels, birds, they have their own food. But if we do that, then you know, we are making a big mess in our uh, environment. So anyways, the, when we stopped throwing the food, feeding the, the squirrels and the birds, no more, ma no more mice, no more rats, right? So this is the same thing. If you choose to feed the mind with the bad thing, it grows. It makes the internal space full of filthy thing, creating the bad smell, making your life miserable. So in meditation, this is what we are doing. When you sit on the cushion, as soon as you enter the temple, when you enter through this, uh, you know, that door, through the shrine room, when you sit on the cushion, like as Buddha did, you had to make a determination. Throughout this hour, I'm not going to choose to feed the bad mind with the bad thinking. I'm here to choose the good mind to feed it with the good thinking, good thoughts. Also to do that, it's like, you know, we could have memories and experiences, thoughts coming, you know, or popping up because we have a lot of experience through these channels, right? We have to close them, stop. Right? And then let the mind settle down in the moment and although a bad thought pops up, then you have to simply tell yourself, I'm not here to feed the bad mind with the bad thought. I know if I allow this bad thought to settle in, it's going to make me miserable, uncomfortable. So you simply let it go and Instead of that, you know, do that shifting attention. Shift your attention from bad thinking to the good thinking. Bad thought to the good thought. Like, you know, if you're getting kind of annoyed, right? We all get annoyed at some point throughout our life. Then you choose not to get annoyed. Because you're getting annoyed because you're... you're putting your attention to that annoying object, annoying thing out there. So you simply shift attention to something positive which does not annoy you. When you put your attention there, 
you feel that you're happy. You, you, you're calming down, you're relaxing. This is a way of learning to feed the good mind with the good thoughts. So for this, you need a lot of mindfulness. You need to develop your mindfulness, even to understand this. Uh, I think that's it. And <laughs> with this uh, insights in mind. Now let us begin our mindfulness meditation practice. <clears throat>